Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Slay. If you saw the previous episode, I'm sure you were telling everyone today, did you see that ludicrous display last night? And so we're going to go ahead and go with an easy level today, see if we can do a little better. Today we'll be playing Do 2. So I can see right away this is a very interesting level, in that it has two gigantic peninsulas, or at least one gigantic and one very large on the east. Looks like we may be in a decent position to at least get a chunk of that peninsula. Looking at the other territories that we have to work with. Looks like the bulk of our power is going to be focused right here on the western front. Should be able to secure that southwestern area pretty easily. Definitely have a good chunk of men here near the southeastern peninsula as well. So upon further review, it seems that the northeastern peninsula will actually be rather difficult for us to attack gain control of. Looks like the bulk of our forces are actually going to be in the west and in the southeast. I don't see too many spearmen. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I'm focusing on gaining this territory and preventing the others from getting a foothold in this general area. We'll make that our main base of operations. See dark green is starting to come together a little bit there in the middle. Definitely going to need to watch out for those guys. So the very interesting thing about this game is, of course, the extreme lack of realism when it comes to your troops. And by that I mean, without having of giving it too much thought, the amount of territory that you have gives you a certain amount of resources every turn. Once you have troops, you will continue to gain resources. You just get fewer of them. But I suppose it's almost like Napoleon and his supply lines. I've always considered to be rather re unrealistic that you get these troops and you have them. And then they can go anywhere within your territory immediately. I'm interested in that castle, but I actually think I'm going to skip on it because there's no really very super strategic place for us to put it. So I suppose it's not as bad as all that in terms of realism because if you're controlling all the territory and you do have proper supply lines, it wouldn't be hard to move troops. I'm not a historian, I don't even particularly care for history, but I do remember reading once that Napoleon was able to do so well because he did strategically place supply line, supply line depots in appropriate places, kept his army extremely well fed. If you are a historian and you know about it, please corroborate that or disprove it. I'd love to hear more. So my primary focus in this general area here is going to be getting up into that peninsula. But at the same time, we do need to defend from attackers from the west. I'm also cautiously watching those trees. So our enemies are starting to build spearmen, and that's always a concern. 
And I'd like to take some territory away from this yellow guy. However, at the same time, I don't want to make myself a target. So I'm going to play it a little bit safe, at least for another round or two. Nothing else to do here. I'm going to go ahead and defend myself against that Spearman. Actually, I take that back. I'm not going to do that. That Spearman is almost certainly going to be dead as soon as I hit end turn. All right. Not a bad move. But not a good one either. We're now split. There's nothing either of these units can do. That's going to leave us a little vulnerable. Fortunately, there's no other Spearman around, but this light brown territory could create one, uh, as that light medium green territory could as well. And I've got to make a decision now about what we're going to do with this territory here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just hope for the best. And we're looking good here in the south other than those trees. We're only making one additional resource unit per turn. That's not nearly enough. So definitely going to need to do something about these trees. Try and defend that territory as best I can. That was a decent move. More territory there as well. Nothing for him to do. The way these territories play out, I'm always reminded me of episodic television shows, kind of like Deep Space Nine or Babylon 5 or Battlestar Galactica. The kind of show where there's multiple storylines going on at the same time. As soon as you get yourself really wrapped up and invested in one of those storylines, it switches to a different storyline. I feel like it's kind of the same here. You get yourself really wrapped up in what's going on with one territory and... Oh, darn. Ran out of men. I was able to combine those two territories together, but with those spearmen around, I don't think they're going to stay combined for very long. I'm going to go ahead and just do that. Build that castle there. That'll at least prevent those guys from moving forward too quickly. Anyway, as I was saying, you get wrapped up in the stories behind one of the territories, or what's happening with any one particular territory, as it were. You start to really get interested in that one and that one alone. And that can actually be kind of kind of trouble. You start forgetting what's happening everywhere else in your kingdom. You don't want to focus too much on any one territory. You gotta think of the whole map. Seeing some problems, potential problems here as well. Try and gain some of these territories back. And actually I need to castle up. Go ahead and do that there. Gaining a lot of resources from this territory. Hopefully we can castle again on our next turn. Very good there. That was a good move. That should be decent there. And there. Ah, uh, major trouble with those trees. I'm very worried about that. But hopefully I've been inflicted enough damage on green there. We can castle again, but I feel like almost we need men to get rid of these trees as well. I'll go ahead and do that, try and get a couple more tiles on the territory there. I'm going to use my spearmen to defend. Good, I can bring those two territories together. That castle there will protect us quite a bit. And we're definitely in trouble here. Especially with that spearman in the back. The only good news is if he takes out a territory, that's not really going to... Or tile, that's not going to hurt that territory much. It's all trees back there. See if I can get rid of the spearman by taking over a bunch of his territory there. I'm actually going to go ahead and leave 
not recruit that unit there simply because I need the resources for a castle. In the northern part of this territory, I'm going to focus on the spearmen, have him defend, leave the south alone, and in the middle I'm going to try and get rid of those trees. All right, moving on. Good, good, we're in the positive now. See what we can do about these trees. Gain more territory there. Castle will still help us out there. Along here we're doing pretty well. So put a castle up here to defend the north. Continue to attack with spearmen and peasants. Bring the peasants down here to regain the territory from the trees. I'm hoping this medium green territory here is so focused on what's happening on his east that he can ignore what's happening on his northwest. Although he definitely could take territory from me. He just chooses not to. Inexplicably. Continue to use my spearmen to defend the north. My peasants to regain ground in the... This is good, I can start moving into that peninsula now. This, on the other hand, is not so good. Reunited. Oh, and we have this territory here in the middle that has decided it needs to put a castle up. That'll be a challenge. We're going to absolutely have to do something about this dark green guy very, very soon. He's going to become a powerhouse that we are not going to be able to surmount if we don't do something about him very soon. I'm afraid we just don't have the men to do anything about it right this very second. However, I'll go ahead and bring my men out that way, put in a castle right there. Should be able to split his territory in the next move. And a nice, well-defensible area right there. Probably not going to do us much good in the long run. However, it will keep these guys in the far north occupied for a while. All right, now, having had that happen, got his territory split now. He should have a kind of a hard time However, the way I have that set up, now we have multiple multiple territories. Castle right there. Further defense there and there. Light brown territory is no longer a problem. Gonna need to consider getting a knight in this territory. We're not quite ready for that yet. He's probably thinking about putting a knight together too also. Definitely a challenging map. Go ahead and see what we can do about those trees. Well, in the northeast, the cheese stands alone. Good, he was not able to do very much there. So I'm actually going to use the spearman to chop down that tree. That'll defend a lot of the middle part of that territory there. I'll use that spearman to defend there. And then what I can do... Let's see if I have enough men to actually make this strategy work. I do. And that's a good way to encroach on his territory quite a bit. In fact, I'll even bolster my own territory that way, like that. So now I've taken out a good chunk of his territory. i got his spearman there in the middle. Definitely that spearman's going to die. Only concern here is I've got this large army. 
It looks like my territory could split pretty easily. I'm going to roll with it. I think it's an extremely dangerous thing to do, but I'm going to roll with it anyway. It looks to me like this territory, on the other hand, could definitely be split. I don't think those spearmen in the south are going to make it. And I was right. So this simple little let's make them work for their territory castle there has actually gotten us let's see what's that getting us four resource units per turn that's not a whole lot there's nothing to sneeze at and now I have my entire territories everything outside of this small group in the north is now all connected rather tenuously but they are connected and I can take three peasants and really give him a hard time there and then if I follow that up with three spearmen I have now completely looped and split him up another spearman there now that's extremely well defended can bolster there and there can't do that I was hoping to put that spearman there put the castle there now we're extremely well defended. Where's our weak spot? It's always a weak spot. Put my spearmen in that weak spot. Put that spearman right there. So even though he kind of sort of split us up, we're still completely connected. He tried. He tried real hard, but he didn't make it. So we can go spearman, peasant, peasant. And the way we got that going is we're going to have his territory split to very multiple, very small, and extremely useless territories. We're going to own this ter this entire region very, very soon. Of course, I'm still concerned that it's overrun with trees. However, with the number of peasants we'll have, we'll just put our back up against the wall. And it might take a few minutes. It might take several turns. We'll be in good shape. I'm going to gain a little bit more territory here and here. I am, of course, concerned that he has spearmen. But if I can just wait another turn, we'll get a few more. We'll get another castle. That'll help us defend a lot. All those crosses. Every single one of them a dead trooper. All right, so I'm going to put, like I say, I'm going to put my back up against the wall here. I'm going to get all my peasants. If you're playing this game on Android, you can long press to bring your entire army into one position. Continue to split his territory. There and there. And now, I am concerned about what he has here in the north. That's a decent army. But not nearly enough, I don't think. Look at these guys. Why did that Spearman not attack me? I tell you, the AI is not that great. Definitely the downfall of the game. Doesn't mean that the harder levels are not challenging. It may be about time for us to bring a knight into the equation. I'm playing this very relaxed now. If you play strategically, there's absolutely no reason why you can't win in fewer turns than you're going to see me win in. But I play very relaxed. I like to like to gain every ounce of territory that I can, make sure I'm completely squared away. In fact, a lot of the times the guys surrender before I'm ready. It's kind of like when you're playing Monopoly. As soon as one person starts to have a lot of fun, Everybody else gets very, very bored. All right, look at this. He's got a knight now. Now I'm, I wouldn't say I'm in trouble. Definitely not in trouble. However, I do need to concern myself with that. So how are we doing? We got 37 resource coming to us each turn. Other than the trees, I don't see any major, major threats. 
I think we need to split this guy, this light brown unit in our territory up a little bit. So I bring my army all up here. And this is Peasant Delight. Absolutely be able to decimate his territory here with a couple of spearmen and mostly peasants. Now when you use this strategy, if you aren't what I like to consider honeycombing, meaning you're making these honeycomb patterns that uh, split territory up to lots of different small pieces. If you're not doing the honeycombing, which you can't do if you don't have a large, large army, you do run the risk of having him cut off your supply line and have all of your troops die. It's definitely a possibility. But if it's only peasants, most of the time it's completely worth it. Had a suspicion that maybe we were going to win on that round. Didn't happen. No big deal. We do control huge amounts of territory compared to everyone else. But the territory that we control is, like I say, it's very fragmented, honeycombed, and littered with trees. Alright, so that light brown guy that was kind of scaring me just a little bit a minute ago has now did not leave himself nearly well defended enough. He is now completely gone. Where are my other problems? I would say for certain we're being challenged by these guys here in the northwest. Obviously the trees are huge. So let's clean this up just a little bit here. Gain us a few more resource points and they would like to surrender. And that was it, 20 turns. Once again, thank you very much for joining us. Hope to see you again soon.